Inside Russia, the Kremlin now moving to make it illegal to log on to Facebook or Instagram in Russia, what the Russian people could face. James Longman in Moscow. Vladimir Putin's assault on free speech intensifying tonight. Facebook's parent company Meta is to be designated an extremist organization. People who log into Facebook or Instagram here could now be tried under the same laws as ISIS terrorists. Moscow says it's in response to Meta's easing of its hate speech guidelines, which allow Ukrainians the ability to call for violence against Russians fighting in their country. The move further limits Russian access to non-state sanctioned information, but young people here will find a way. It's a shame, this young man says, but you can survive without it. The bloggers I'm following will all move to Telegram, and I'll follow them there. Ekaterina Kotrikadze is an anchor of the now-closed Liberal Rain TV station, where staff walked out following a media crackdown. A lot of people, just like me, have lost everything because of one man's decisions. So, um, yeah, it's horrible. She's now left the country for her own safety, and she tells me many young men are leaving too, worried that even though Putin has insisted there'll be no draft, they'll be called up to fight. If you fly from Russia and you um, enter an airplane, you can see a lot of young men, single. I mean, they're traveling alone, a lot of them, because they're running. Um, leaving behind their families sometimes. Meanwhile here, 30 years of progress set back as more and more Western shops close. More than 330 multinational companies have now suspended operations here. Today, Morgan Stanley has now joined household names like Coca-Cola and McDonald's in the exodus. Vladimir Putin shrugging off the financial impact yet again today, saying Russia will adapt. Vladimir Putin may miss the former USSR, but the difference is millions of Russians now enjoy the kinds of modern comforts uh, that he is now effectively ripping away from them. There are those who do idealize the former Soviet Union, but there are many young people here who never lived through it, and they're desperately scared of what its return might mean.